wonderful singing. And for our next hymn, we request everyone to please stand. Let us sing a flag to follow. Together, 
and after this, he, he opened the report in the Bible, the first Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. Okay? Ako lang mabasa sa first Corinthians chapter 12. But here, we will just pretend we will be this together starting from verse 19. Okay? Hebrews 10, 19, ready, begin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, living way, which he hath consecrated for us to the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as ye see the day approaching. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 down to verse... Uh, said for and as many members and all the members of the body though many are one body so it Jews or Greeks slaves or free and all were made to drink of one spirit for the body does not consist of one member but of many if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the, and if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as, it, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as He chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now if you are the body of Christ and individually members of it, and God is appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles and gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Shall we look to God in prayer? Ang mga mahal nga Diyos, among balaan nga ginoo sa langit. Salamat ginoo. Salamat gayot. Salamat sa makausa. Wali undang ginoo ang among pagpasalamat o kalipay diha kanimo tungod kay ginoo 
mana kalau yang kuat. Harus coba juga simpan kenimu, coba pencari kenimu, and uh, anticipating that we'll be facing another year that we will again experience the fulfillment of another promise from you to see us through the past year of Russia as an initiate. And indeed, we'll be up here right now. And uh, we are so glad and very happy to see each other, to see our brethren in person, just by seeing them before their gives joy to our hearts. We are elated, Lord, not only to know that you have been taking good care of them, but also the Father knowing that uh, they have with them, we all have with us, new testimonies, new tales, new proclamations of your grace and of your mercy and of your blessings. And indeed, each time we are together, it's a time of fellowship and worship. It's a time of glorifying your name, honoring the Lord Jesus Christ and of uh, proclaiming the goodness of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives. And thank you, Lord, for, for putting in our hearts the confidence, for putting in our hearts and even in our minds the, the resolve to trust you more, to strengthen our faith in you, and no matter what, to always just cling to you, God, and walk with you through your word, through the Holy Spirit. And there's nothing more that we desire to do, Lord, than to be in constant communion with you. of your goodness, because of your faithfulness, because of your benevolence. So that people will know who you are through our lives. And so, Lord, please 
this campus that is used as divided. These lives are not ours for the living, but these lives are yours for the taking of God. Use our lives as you please. Even now as we just immerse ourselves in your word, and even in your presence, just Lord, please give us joy, make our joy complete, and give us fulfillment. And help us, dear Father, to think of no other thing but you and you alone. Think about what we can get from you, but instead help us to think about what we can offer to you, Lord. And may we offer ourselves as pleasing sacrifice to you, a sweet-smelling aroma, so that you may be pleased, you may be glorified, you may be honored, and your testimony will be known and magnified throughout the land, throughout our community, throughout our families, and throughout the places wherever your gospel is preached. Again, Lord, magnify yourself in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may take your seats. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's January 3. No? Dali ara kayo eh. Nag-lipay-lipay pa tayo aging adlaw. Kaya karon, Laan na yung mga estudyante na ito nga nagunahuna. Sila mga modules. Balik na po sa trabaho. Okay? Back to reality. Uh, I think wala man tanihimulag siguro sa reality. Ang kalipay o ang paningkamot, ang kahago, all those things are part of reality. No? So, salamat sa ginoo kay uh, naagi hapunta sa reality. No? Uh, buhi ki hapunta, he is still, he is, uh, still preserving us and uh, every day that we wake up, that we breathe, that we walk, that we talk, that we think, that we work, it's an opportunity that uh, we will be used by God to fulfill His purposes in our lives. All right? Uh, to start with, I would like to borrow this uh, story or this illustration actually. Kita na ako nag-share ni Quinil sa Facebook. This is a, a wonderful uh, illustration that has a lot of uh, spiritual and moral lessons and implications. There was a family nga hilig magform form puzzle. I can remember when I was in high school, uh, so, so when growing up, I, I, I really didn't know much about puzzle until na akong sister and akong brother-in-law, uh, they brought home a Thomas Kincaid puzzle, 1,000 pieces, Lisud Monday Himono, but when you finish the puzzle, wow, it's wonderful. Inalani preserve, it frame. So, this family, they were, uh, ang ilang hobby was putting together jigsaw puzzles. And one, one day, ilang father came home bringing a 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. And the more these uh, the, the more this family finishes puzzles, the more they want to uh, form more difficult puzzles. So during this time, nagdala ang father o much difficult nga puzzle. And then, gi, 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 latag nila do, they immediately in, indulged in it. Okay? And so they, they started putting the puzzles together, but after pila ka hours, they grew frustrated. Gano? Gano? Dili? Mani? Of, of course, who, who experience? Na I, I believe sa inyo na experience o him o puzzle, at first, tanahon, good name mo ang nasa picture. And, and you will, you will look for the important details, uh, especially katong mga varying colors and shapes aron makita ni mo kung unsang api sa puzzle ang imong i-connect. But they grew frustrated. Don't okay, wala yan po sila na-accomplish. It seems nga wala progress ang ilang gihimo. And then the father realized nga ang cover di ay sa puzzles, isa ka puzzle, nabali 
dili mauto nga cover ang puzzle nga ilang gihimo. Ang puzzle nga ilang gihimo ug ang picture they based their their work on that picture, ang picture ay wala na mao. Kay agatong picture motong cover sa isa ka puzzle. Mga igsuon in our lives sometimes this story is reflected. Daghan mga panahon ga paningkamot ta sa tong kinabuhi. We have pursuits, we have dreams, we have goals, we have aspirations. But no matter how hard we tried, we get frustrated. Especially no, uh, sa, sa base sa ilang ingon ang mga millennials no. Uh, ang, ang mga millennials wala na consistency. Kung naay mga challenges, difficulties, bang switch your career, switch your career because they could not bear, they could not stand being um, consistent and even solving problems they encounter. I believe dili lang mga millennials, many people are like that. But that's my 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 point is Many times in our lives, we get frustrated at what we do because first and foremost, we do not know where we're going and what we're doing. We do not know the very purpose of what we are doing. Unsa atong direction, unsa atong paingnan, unsa ang big picture ini kahuman ni atong kining atong ginapaning kamutan. Tira pasagad. Okay? Murag shotgun approach. Then, mga Iksuon, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying you this because as I have said and as I have been praying for, I have shared this initially with, with our leaders. For this year, especially this is a hallmark year for us, 25 years, salamat sa gino, all by God's amazing grace. Uh, I believe we, it's, it's, it's time. Any time is always a relevant time. But I believe now more than ever, it's high time that we go back to the basics of what this church stands for, of what this church stood for when they started 25 years ago and even until now. You know, we know that our culture today is a culture where self-reliance, self-worth, self-esteem, self-fulfillment, selfie, all self, self, self. These are the considerable traits to be desired. Money ang gina promote from from uh, the the advertisements, sa mainstream media, and even in multimedia platforms, our culture is promoting self, being individualistic, being uh, independent. And actually, when we try to look at that and usahay, we fail to evaluate, especially among our young people, and even sa atong tanan, that we tend to go against the culture and even the mandate of the Bible. Let's remember, even sa unang panahon, even in the Old Testament times, God, God's ways, God's methods, God's works has, have always been countercultural. In every age, in every era, God's working has always been countercultural. And even sa itong panahon karon, doing church, okay? Oh, we, especially sa influence of West and even diri sa atong panahon. Even the way we do church, we, many church leaders are doing their church, they, they, they are designing their churches, their programs, their activities according to the culture. Is there, is there, is, is it really totally wrong? I, I, I don't believe that it's totally wrong. Yes, we have to consider our culture now. But, mga Iksun, ang point is, from the starting point, kung ang atong sinugdanan, kung atong foundation, kung ang atong pinaka-purpose is to cater the culture 
And then we will do ministries, we will do church work, not from what we have learned from the expositions of the Bible, and that, that is where it becomes totally wrong. The way we do church must be a product of our understanding of the expositions, the ex exegesis of the message of the Word of God. It's always from that. Okay, and, and now, uh, growing in the church or being a member of the local church even, you know, when we are in the church, when... when I grew up, salamat sa ginoo, I grew up in a time and, and in a place and even in our church where still submission to authority, spiritual authority, and even accountability with other members and even interdependence with other Christians are being uh, constantly taught. Even salamat sa ginoo, because in my lifetime and, and with the people that God has put in my life to influence me. I have been, I, I, I grew in an atmosphere, in a place, in a church where holiness has, has uh, holiness is being promoted. Uh, the life of the church is being upheld. And salamat kita sa gino because here in Harvest is Baptist Church, that is, that is, we still consider that the ground, the foundation, and the anchor of our church life. It's all about being relevant. It's all about finding your own truth and bending the truth of the Bible to your experiences. Now, as I've said, no, even karon nga panahon, Kumuingon ka nga faithful ka nga members sa simbahan. Dili lang kay sa mga tao, mga, mga unbelievers, but even in some Christian circles, murag i-consider ka nilang holy-holy. I-consider ka nilang oh, eh, man siya, oy. And even they would think that being a member of this, being a committed member of the church is being restrictive. It is a foreign thought and sometimes it is counterproductive. Ay no pud palabi sa simbahan kay di na ka magpa asa palabi mo muna ni mo imong ginoginoo ay sad How are we my son and and how are we in this church I really pray I really pray that none of us are thinking that way Di ta maingon oh inga nila kutob dili ko mag Ingatlah kutub dapat ang kumit mesti simbahan. Dili kumu pelabi. No, mengikson. Last year we emphasized the value of growing deeper in the Word. Actually, for two years now we have this emphasis: growing deeper, growing in the Word, growing deeper in the Word. Why? Because we believe that the Word teaches us not only the wonderful truths of our salvation in Christ. But also, the Word of God bears the divine standard for personal holiness. And that is what we should remember. We are already called saints, and we therefore must live as saints. The Bible teaches us that. It has the divine standard for personal holiness. But this year, this year, my so on. As I've said, it's a hallmark year for us. 25 years. Our challenge for this year, not only this year, but even the years to come, but specifically for this year, our thrust and our challenge would be to desire to grow deeper in God's Word. Okay? Of course, we will never divorce ourselves from the Word of God, but we will desire to grow Deeper in the Word. Okay? Why? Because the Word is the only manual of instruction for the conduct of the church. 
We will grow deeper in the Word so that we will grow deeper in the church. And that will be our challenge for this year, that we may grow in the church and grow deeper in the church. 25 years ago, I believe, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe 25 years ago, I believe this church was not built by Pastor Rod with Pastor Boy and, and, and many others uh, because they wanted to have their own group, nor just because they desired to have their own fraternity, no. I believe with all my heart that they started, of course, by God's direction and sovereignty, our missionaries, our pastors built this church. They started HHBC because of obedience to the singular purpose of glorifying God by building His kingdom and building His church. That's the reason why this church exists. That's the reason why this church was built and we will continue to do just that, to uphold that. Because deviating from that purpose, deviating from that anchor, may pagdita tawagon ng simbahan. And that is why, brethren, that is what I want us starting today and this year, that is what I want us to realize, to revisit, to refine, and to rediscover in our hearts and in our minds. Let us grow in this church. Let us remind ourselves why this church is here and what is God's purpose for this church, not only for ourselves, but for His kingdom, for His glory, and even for this world. Therefore, akong challenge ato karon. Let's grow. Let's grow together. Let's grow in this church. Let's grow deeper in this church. Now, akong message for this morning is just a starter. No? Just a, uh, uh, a stepping stone somehow for us to uh, to continue to rediscover what this church is all about, what our church is all about, what HHBC is all about. And this morning, I will just share with you just two. No? There, there are a lot. Ato na lang to i-divide, ato na to hinahinayon o tipik-tipik in the coming Sundays. But this morning, I just would like to share with you two essential truths, two very essential truths. Why, as Christians, we must grow in the church? Why bother to be in the church? Why must we be a part of the church? I believe with all my heart you're here in the church this morning because you want to glorify God. We're here because we want to worship God, because we give God His place in our lives. We value God more than anything. But beyond that, my son, not just on Sundays, but in every day of our lives, in every waking moment. Okay? As Christians, do you realize? Do we realize even? I don't know if you recall that every day, but kumuhawa ta sa simbahan, kumuli ta sa mga balay. Even kumuadu ta sa itong mga opisina, kumuadu ta sa itong mga eskwilahan, do you remember that we are still a part of this church? Being a part of this church is not limited kung naata kita diri sulod sa simbahan. Nata sa four corners of this building. We'll define what really is a church in the next messages, but my point is mga igsuon, being a part of the church is in our fabric as believers, we could not separate it. So, mas maayo pa, no? at mas maayo yun, ato yun ni tunan pag maayo, so that we may know 
how we conduct ourselves as part of this church. I'm talking about the local church. But also, we're part of the bigger church, which is the universal church, the body of believers. What are these two very essential truths na maka remind sa ato why we should be a part of this church? I, 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 I heard a preacher say, if you are not a part of the church, of, you know, every person is a part of a church. Every person in the whole world is a part of the church. Okay? Well, maybe we, we didn't realize that. But every person in the world though is a part of the church. One, you're a part of the church of God. Or if not, you're a part of the church of Satan. Doha lang. Pili lang ta. If you're not assured that we're not a part of this church yet, not just the, of course, the, the, the universal church, then we are a part of the church of Satan. But why, what are these essential truths that we can learn that would uh, push us, that would, that would help us okay, grow in this church, grow in the church of Christ? Number one, number one, it's very simple, obedience, obedience. Of course, we know that the, the command, the direct command is never in the Bible. In fact, it's not in the, the New Testament. Kumangita tag to be, thou shalt be a member of the church na wala na siya. Hindi na siya makita diha. No? Even the word Trinity can't be seen in the New Testament, even the whole Bible. But nonetheless, mga isuon, being a part of a group of people, especially a group of people who have their, who have their identity in Jesus Christ, is, is, uh, it, is, it is taught, and in fact, it is pictured, it is allegorized, it is pictured and it is implied in many passages in the New Testament. Although makayon kita nga wala ang direct command niya be a member of a church, thou shalt be a member of a church. But studying these truths, we can learn that becoming a part of the church, becoming a member of the church, especially after we have received the Lord Jesus Christ, belonging to a group of believers is very, very essential. In fact, it is explicitly commanded in the New Testament. Okay? I, I will not go through, okay, somehow this is just uh, an introduction to our series of messages on the church. Ako lang i-mention somehow ang mga passages that would remind us that indeed being a member of the church or growing in a church with a group of Believers, saved sinners is very important. First Corinthians chapter 12 is one. Okay? There is the Apostle Paul. Actually, from chapter 11 of First Corinthians down to, uh, I think, chapter 14, nagihis good na siya about the church. There he talked about the church, uh, the conduct of the believers in the church. He, he, he told them about the sanctity, the the seriousness of, of the uh, Lord's table. Then so verse 12, he talked about spiritual gifts. And then verses 12, why spiritual gifts? Verses 12 to uh, 30 explains that. Nga nung getagan sa Holy Spirit, ang matag-usa ka mga believer ug spiritual gifts. Especially one prominent nga special gift. Uh, sorry, spiritual gift. Because they are members of each other. Because they belong to one group. They belong to the church. And the purpose of the spiritual gifts, the, the purpose of these gifts is for the body to grow. To edify one another. To strengthen one another. To help each other grow. Gihatag sa ato ang gift so that we can use it for our 
brethren. So here, it is implied that although there is one body, one universal body, in fact, one local body, okay, okay, uh, the Apostle Paul somehow implies in here because he was talking to the Corinthian believers in one church. So he was letting them know that in your locality, although daghan mo, but you are one. Right? And lahi lahi mo gifts, and that you must use these gifts to edify one another. Because we, we know no, that one of the things nga address ni Apostle Paul diri is the pride of the believers here. Na ay mga divisions sa sulod sa simbahan tungod kay no ang ang uban they they consider themselves more spiritually mature kaysa sa uban amor ang, ang ilan na hinuon gihimo nga basis aron mahimo ka nga hingpit nga Kristohanon or even tinuod nga Christian the evidence of your faith is ang speaking in tongues dapat na kay miraculous miraculous gifts miracle gifts but you say pastor no that, that is not how that, that's not how it is in, uh, in the church, in the local body of believers. Dili tanan apostles, dili tanan speakers of tongues. Of course, because it's an early church, Panisa. Dili tanan a gifts of interpretation. Dili tanan a gifts of tongues. All have varied gifts. Why? Because that's how they would edify each other in the body. So here implied, it is implied that they are a group of believers. They are one body, but with many members. I'm talking about the, 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 the body of Jesus Christ as a whole. Jesus Christ is the head of the body, and all the Christian members of it. In fact, kung tanaw natong mga igsuon, uh, j- j- looking at this allegory, this is just one of many. Makita na to sa new, especially sa writings of Apostle Paul, ang ang church body, ang body of believers. Gina picture niya, no? Even as, even as a physical body, and even uh, a building, a building. But here, let us look at Matthew chapter 18. Again, this will not be an extensive. Uh, study and explanation on this, but somehow, just to give us an idea, get us going, and help us understand that indeed being a part of the church, being a member of the church is important. Matthew 18, verses 15 to 17. Here, gi, uh, in only Jesus Christ, no, he was, of course, he was talking to the disciples. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. Verse 17, if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Backtrack ko kumay. Every individual believer, the moment nga luwason siya sa ginoo, he becomes a member of the universal church. But here, again, even though dili explicit ang pagkasulti sa New Testament writings that we must be a member of the local church, it is imperative for every believer that he must be a part of a group of believers. And that is what we are compelled to obey. Growing the church starts by obeying that we must be a part of the church because we are already a part of the bigger church as well. Now, my so on here, so Matthew chapter 18, somehow Jesus Christ is telling them how to deal with a sinning brother. Okay? And in fact, makita na to diha that somehow there is a dividing line between okay, a uh, tax collector sa, sa, sa other version, it, it means uh, not literally a tax collector, but an unbeliever. 
Okay? That, kung ang katong, ang imong iksuon, badlungon sa, he is caught in sin, badlungon sa, firstly mo, di isa maminaw, dahil unin mo sa church, di kaya po maminaw, then, kick him out. Mas strong ganit ang gigamit ni, ni Jesus din, no? And even consider him as an unbeliever. Meaning, wala na luwas. So there's a dividing line or, 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 or there's somehow an understanding na na ay group of believers na wherein na ay isa ka member na pwede siya mapahawa. Okay, pwede siya i-discipline, pwede siya pagawson if he is living in sin. Okay? A tax collector, another term for a heathen or an unbeliever, non-Christian, by the way. And again, sa 1 Corinthians, balik ta sa 1 Corinthians, chapter 5. 1 Corinthians, chapter 5. Akong basahan din sa ESV. 1 Corinthians, chapter 5. I will start from in, in, in verse 2. Akong start, start from verse 1. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans. Gabi, no? Muning kakita mo sa sulod sa sibahan. For a man has his father's wife. And you are arrogant. Verse 2. Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. Apostle Paul is implying that there is a group, there is a group of people who identified themselves with themselves. Okay? That is like a group. There is sinning brother he must be removed from that group. Verse 5, okay, uh, verse 3, For though absent in body, I am present in spirit, and as if present, I have already pronounced judgment on the one who did such thing. When you are assembled in the name of the Lord Jesus, and my spirit is present with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Okay? Probably there is a probability, okay, of course, that, that, this, that this person is somehow a believer. But he's caught in sin. And I'm say, Apostle Paul, um, Mas maayo pa na uh, ma-destroy yung flesh so that he will be saved. His soul will be saved. But nonetheless, may iso, nang atong gigi point out there that this group, this group where this person belonged, although he was sinning, but he belonged to that group. He belonged to the church in, in Corinth. Okay? And, and, and not only this aspect of belongingness in a group but here we can also see here in Hebrews, especially chapter 13, ang concept sa, sa relationship between leaders and followers. Okay? Hebrews 13, 17, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Talking to uh, the Christians, even the Jewish Christians, the writer is assuming they are group, they are in a group, but then in their group, there are spiritual leaders among them. Even Apostle Paul and even Peter has I would not emphasize all of these things here. We will talk about that later. But here we can see somehow, nagigi assume sa, of course, to the wisdom and the direction of the Holy Spirit, the writer assumes that this group has a leader, perhaps a shepherd, an under shepherd, a pastor, and these members must submit to them. Obey your leaders and submit to them. For they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. 
They will, these leaders will give an account. Ang accountability sa members, sa ginoo, and also sa ilang mga spiritual leaders. Ang accountability sa mga leaders, of course, ultimately sa ginoo. And they are doubly accountable to God. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Acts 20.28 20, Acts 20.28 20, Okay? I think si Apostle Paul, I think he was talking to the Ephesian leaders during this time. After three years, yang gi established ang church, yang gi, gi, gi organized ang church, it was time for Apostle Paul to leave. And so he was giving, uh, he was giving instructions to the church and particularly sa mga leaders, actually daghana, series of instructions, but here, verse 28, he said, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which He obtained with His own blood. There were instructions given to members. There were instructions given to elders, to spiritual leaders. Why? Dili ka makakita og any organized groups nga walay leader o walay walay uh, kining sini uh, kining members uh, daghanag mga nagtry og maghimog community nga walay leaders no everybody is oh, they, they, they were they they're autonomous no communal living as they say i i i i watch documentary sa uh, I think there was on, on YouTube no, about sa Isaka community many years ago. Nagimo sila mga hippies. I think it's the year 70s or something. Nagimo sila community. At first, it was all good because wala yung maglabaw sa ila, wala pa yung sa ila. They were living communally. They were sharing with each other. And then later on, naguba rin after pila ka years, naguba rin ka ng community because having an organized group without somebody or some people with authority and living will not be sustained. So, uh, I will not put much emphasis on that, Mike, but here in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Apostle Paul was, of course, these leaders, although they're leaders, but they are not to usurp their authority. Dili nila abusuhon ang church because this church as, as Apostle Paul emphasized, to take care of the church of God which he obtained with his own blood. Although these were leaders, okay, somehow they have authority over other Christians, but ultimately, they are also, they, they must also submit to their ultimate leader and the head of the church, Jesus Christ. And we know, mga exon, that there is only one head in the church, there's only one authority in the church. Even in our church, it is God, God alone. Not the pastor, not me, not the senior pastor, not any pastor. It's only Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only authority, is the only head of the church. And the spiritual leaders, the pastors are only there. They are put, they have given authority, but they can only exercise the authority given by them or or kining gi, gi, not, not given actually given more really accurate than given word or gi, gi, what do you call this more gi, gi sugo sa ila sa gino. first peter 5 1 to 4 first peter 5 1 to 4 so I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. This is the kind of leadership that God is instilling and expecting from His under shepherds sa sulod sa simbahan. Okay? Dili abusive, 
dili dili kingly but being examples to the flock and when the chief shepherd of, appears you will receive the unfading crown of glory likewise you who are younger be subject to the elders clothe yourselves all of you with humility toward one another for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble mga igsuon these are commands given by God to the people in the church. And in the organization of the church, in the body of the church, there are distinctions. Yes, we are of equal value and dignity at ubangan sa ginoo. Pareha sa tantanan, way labaw sa ato, way ubos. Okay? Way makaingon, ah, mas labaw ni si pastor. Kay uh, pastor guni. No, pareha sa tantanan. But somehow, we have different distinctions. We have different offices and accountabilities sa ginoo. Okay? But of course, we are told to give honor to whom honor is due. And, uh, but sama, nakita ninyo ang, na, na, nasabta ninyo mga ikson ang picture. We were all commanded to be a part of this group of believers. It's implied there. It's implied, especially in the New Testament. That no Christian is a lone soldier. Walay Kristuhanon nga mag kinabuhi sa iyang kinabuhi, Kristuhanon nga kinabuhi nga siya rosa. Yes, somehow makagrow gihapon siya, pero it will be very, very difficult. Because God's design for every Christian is to be in the church and to grow in the church and with the church. Atong spiritual gifts, we can exercise that in the context of the church. Atong pag-exercise in loving one another, we will, we will digest this in the coming Sundays. In loving one another, in helping one another, in exercising forgiveness, we can do that and we may do that, and we are expected to do that in the context of the church. Okay. Uh, verse, 1 Peter 5, verse 1 uh, uh, verse 4. Ah, yeah. day. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders, clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. There are many more. There are many more commands. Ako na ni Paspasunog Basa. There are more commands regarding the relationship of Christians sa sulod sa simbahan. Hey, Galatians 6.10 So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who, to those who are of the household of faith. The household of faith. Kinsa man ang naa sa sulod ni household. Ang description ni household, it is a household of faith. So it implies that it is the house or the family of believers. Okay? The family of believers, this is where we belong and we must belong. On say command, we must do good. In every opportunity that we have, we must show Love and do good to those of us, to those of you, mga who are in the household of faith. John 13, 34. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. Diba, ato na nang gitakol, I think, two years ago. Gi, atong gi isa-isa ang atong, atong uh, commitment without church covenant commitment. Atong commitment to love one another. There are more than 53 commands about one another's in the Bible. This is one of them. In fact, the major command regarding our relationship with one another. Love one another. Hebrews 10, 24, 25. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Even John 13. Okay? Yeah, just like John 13. 
meeting together? How can we exercise loving one another? Of course, karon it has been easier to naanatay cell phone, naanatay way nga makakommunicate. Somehow we can express our love. Pero again, words are cheap. May soon. In fact, kung tanawon ito sa whole Bible, ang ultimate expression of our love to one another is through our actions. To our actions. And how may we share and show our love for one another if we are not meeting together? If we are only living alone? And if we are distancing ourselves from the brethren? I believe you have experienced this many times, ang atong bitterness, ang atong doubts, and even atong ill feelings towards our brothers and sisters. Mawala kung ato silang makita, kung ato silang maistorya. Right? And there have been many Christians who grew, grew bitter and doubtful and untrusting because they have remove themselves intentionally from the fellowship of the brethren. So why should we grow in the church? And why should we grow deeper in the church? Why? Because of obedience. We, we, we ought to obey the commands of the scriptures. We ought to obey it. Ikaduha. And the last, not only obedience. Why grow in the church? Why must we also be a part of the church? Why must we desire to grow and be committed in the church? Not just because of obedience, but also because and for spiritual protection. Spiritual protection. Spiritual protection. Do you know the worst thing that can happen sa usaka kristuhanon sa iyang entire kinabuhi? I believe for, we, 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 I believe we, we already know of the experiences, especially of the Christians in the early church. Grabe ang persecution, no? Grabe ang, I mean, literal yun yung persecution ng pamatyon sila, pang, pambulagon ang stretch, higdan ang kamot, higdan ang tiil, no? Dito sa arena sa, sa Roman Coliseum. And then, bitaron ang kamot ng tuil, hantod ng matunga ang lawas, ipakaon sa liyon, ang panit sa bear, itahi sa panit sa kristuhanon, sunugon sa steak. Okay? Is that the worst thing that could happen to us? No, marag, uh, for many years, in Christendom, marag, wala kayo na nato na experience Even diri sa itong nasod. Until recently, last year, Murag kayo ta oy murag hinahinay man nga gina-restrict ta sa atong faith sa pag-exercise nato sa atong faith. Nimo kay ngunta nga murag oy nagsugod ang persecution. But is that the worst thing that could happen to us? I believe not. The worst thing that can happen to a Christian it is not persecution, it is not physical injury, even death, it's not. Okay? We, we all know what Romans 8 says, in fact, in fact, my exon, these things, these trials, these difficulties, these persecutions, more times than not, they are God's instruments so that we can be refined in our spiritual lives. Yes, you know. But the worst thing that can happen, the worst thing that can happen to a Christian the worst thing that can happen to a believer, especially to a believer in the church, is to be take is to be overtaken by sin. The worst thing that could happen to a believer is when he is overtaken by sin. overtaken by sin. Okay? Why? We learn why. But let's remember first. Nga nung lisod, nga nung worst, nga nung lisod sa usa ka kristuhanon nga mahulog sa pagpakasala kaysa silutan siya sa iyang sa iyang pagtuo. 
Let's remember first. Let's remember, let us follow this logically. Why did Jesus come to earth? Why did Jesus come here? Unsa ang purpose sa pag ni Jesus Christ? 1 Corinthians 15.21 For our sake, He made Him to be sin who knew no sin so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Christ lived and died to save us. Christ lived righteously so that we might attain righteousness in Him. Not perfection, not sinless perfection, but righteousness. We may grow in righteousness. So kung ang isa ka Kristuhanon mahulog sa pagpakasala, and ang pinaka-worst pag yun, kung lamian na siya siyang pagpakasala, then He is living in total opposite of the greatest thing that could happen to a man. And that is being saved from sin. Because the best thing that could happen to a person and the best thing that ever happened to us Christians is when we were saved from our sins. Right? Right? Pabasig mo ka ang pinaka the best nga nahita mo sa mong kinabuhay ka to nakadaog ko 6 million sa loto. Huwag ka na pangasawa na ako kung asawa. Huwag ka itong natawa kong anak. Is that the best thing that happened? No, no, no. The best thing that happened to us was when we received the forgiveness of God from our sins. And when a person, when a Christian is overtaken by sin, it is the worst thing that could happen to him. Right? He's living counter to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. But even in his sin, even in our sin, Christ is still offering us grace. Let's remember also Ephesians 4.30. When a Christian is overtaken in sin, he is grieving the Holy Spirit. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Again, let's remember, the greatest thing that happened to us was when God saved us. And when God saved us, He has given us a guarantee. And that guarantee is always, it's already imprinted, in, engraved in us through the Holy Spirit living in us. That whatever happens from now until Christ comes or until we die, we will forever be with God. But if you're living in sin, of course, it's only God who can see, who can judge our hearts. But what is the message we are telling the world? That are we not yet sealed by the Holy Spirit? Why are we grieving the Holy Spirit when we are living in sin? And uh, talking about God the Father, Hebrews 12, 5 to 8, And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him, for the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom the father, whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Mone isa sa mga reasons nga nung lisod, ma, mas lisod, if we are overtaken in sin, then we are being persecuted. Yes, persecution can masakitanta. We are rejected, masakitanta. We are harmed physically, masakitanta. Pero sa ingon pa sa kong, I, I could never forget this even until now. And, and this is one thing na nakahatag sa akong fear. Somehow, a, a negative, uh, sorry, a positive fear. Fear of God and fear sa kong ginikanan. 
dili ako kalimtan akong nanay itong gagmay pa may mo yung gano'n siya nga ang, ang pinakadili na mo gusto ma, madunggan sa iya mo ni pahala na ang ginoo ni mo gitugyan natin ka sa ginoo kaya ang sulti siya ang nanay pirmi si nanay mo latus kung makasala mi latusun mi kami pa ipakuhaon o Ana ko makasala gani me. Kuag tokog dito, tokog, kuag tokog. Siya pay mula tos. Ako ay kuag tokog. Ang tokog nga kung gikuha mo ilatos ako nanay. Pero mo ingon nga nako nanay, di na kumulatos ninyo ang Ginoo nay bahala. Kay ang Ginoo mas sakit mula tos. Kay ang Ginoo mas sakit mo disiplina. Yes, God will discipline us. And it is even more painful than the discipline of our own parents. But that is how we act as a father. Because God wants to purge sin in our lives so that we may realize that indeed we are already His. We are already God's. God is a jealous God. And He doesn't want His children to live and to continue living in sin because continue living in sin, you are living the lifestyle of the devil. God wants you to live in righteousness because that's the character of Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, monang, monang worse isa sa mga worst things that could happen to a Christian if he's overtaken in sin. And the other, Titus 1.16. Titus 1.16 and 1 John 2.3-6. Titus 1.16, they profess to know God, but they deny Him by their works. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for any good work. Of course, one of the questions, kabubutang sa tungunahuna, when a person, when a Christian is caught in sin, tinuod baka ni siya ng Kristohanon. Diba? Usahin mo na nga itong, mo na itong ginawa na una. Because we can see their hearts. Only God can see their hearts. But we have an accountability, as James put it, to make our faith be evident through our works. And if we are living in sin, and if we are working, we are doing sinful acts, it could put a question sa atong testimony and even sa atong salvation. 1 John 2, 3-6 And by this we know that we have come to know Him if we keep His commandments. And whoever says, I know Him, but does not keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. But whoever keeps His word, in Him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in Him. Whoever says He abides in Him ought to walk in the same way in which He walked. Okay? So, may iksuon, ang pinakalisod ng mahita buo sa soka kristyano is when he is overtaken in sin. Let's remember, 1 Peter 5.8, Satan is waiting. He is like a roaring lion. He walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We are, we are in a spiritual battle. And sometimes, ang, at- ang attack ni Satan, dili sa itong atubangan, kung dili sa itong kilid, sa itong kilid, sa itong likod, subtly. Subtly. That's why, in sa Hebrews 3, verse 30, that's why it, we are being exhorted. These are just some of the things, some of the exhortations that we can get that as a body, as a member of the church, as one who is saved and is growing in the church, what must we do? Okay, what must we do to protect ourselves and to help our fellow brethren be protected from t- being overtaken in sin. Hebrews 3.13 But exhort one another every day as long as it is called today that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. No? We are to exhort one another, to encourage one another every day as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Two ways. Kung kita may soon, we have brethren who have been overtaken in sin. If dili tamo reach out, dili tamo, dili tamo, kining, dili nato sila i, 
uh, encourage. Okay? And I, I'm, you know, exhorting mga exon, it's not just saying kining kining uplifting words. Uy, kuana, uy, kuana. Dili di, di, ni jamming-jamming ang exhortation. Because appeals exhortation and rebuke. Okay? To correct. And in fact, that is the purpose of the Word of God. Atong gamiton sa pag-exhort sa atong brethren who is in sin. Diba? 2 Timothy 3.16 All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That is a part of exhortation. We rebuke, but most importantly, we encourage, we uplift. Okay? So if we're not doing that, ang atong igsuon nga nagkagaluya na nasa kasala, it, it would be possible that magapadayon pag yun sa ugsad-sad sa iyong papakasala. And on the other hand, if any one of us, if you, if kita mga Kristuhanon, we know that we are struggling with sin and even now we are in sin, if dili po taman ng kamot, to be in fellowship with our with our brethren. Because I believe, and the Bible tells us as well, that it starts also from us. If you are willing to be corrected, to really grow and, 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 and to be, to go back to the fellowship, okay? Kung dili taman ng kamot, to be in fellowship and to be advised, to be corrected, to be rebuked by our brethren, then, God forbid, magkapadayon ta sa atong pagpakasala. Romans 15.14 I, Romans 15.14 I myself am satisfied about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to instruct one another. So, uh, talking about admonishing one another. No? Can you instruct word you instruct here? It's the word admonish. To admonish. Pag may may. Pag, pag badlong, pag encourage, pag tudlo. Sayop na yung mo. Okay? Sige lang, God is gracious. Padahin lang. So this is what you must do. Continue. Continue. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we know the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Si Apostle Paul nag, uh, nag-warn sa mga uh, taga-Corinth about what happened sa mga Israelites when they were in the wilderness sa ilang pagpakasala. And then in verses 11 to 12, iyang ingon sa ila, Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. And in verse 12, this is very, very, very important, my exon, and one that we must always bear in mind. Verse 12, Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed, lest he fall. We think, uh, ah, strong man ko sa spiritual temptation, ah, st- strong man ko anang mga sexual temptation, daily lagi ko madala anak. Ha <laughs> Ingon si Satan, ah, strong day ka, na, ha? Because, as you have observed, Satan's best weapons are weapons forged in accordance to your weakness, to our weaknesses. Taylor made sa atong a weakness. Ah, ligon lagi ko ng kwarta. I have financial integrity. Ah, ligon lagi ko ng relationships. Ano pa? Ah, dili lagi ko mahulog ana. Vices, dili lagi ko mahulog ana. Ah. Mo de ha, ligon de ka ha. Okay, sige, hulat lang. After pila ka months, after maybe even years, Satan will, Satan will always come up with something that would tear you down because we are living in this world. We, we, again, let's remember we are living a spiritual battle. Diba yung si Apostle Paul sa Ephesians chapter 10? We are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the power of the evil one, of the devil. And unless we know our enemy, we cannot know how to defeat him. And we cannot know how to defend ourselves. Kailatakin sa itong kaaway, mga Iksuon. 
Don't forget ang atong kaaway dili tao kung dili si Satanas. And walay tao nga makapildi kang Satanas. Remember that. Walay tao nga makapildi kang Satanas unless God is helping him. That's why we should put on the whole armor of God. It's the only one that can defend us. Not just for the sake of chismis, but let me just tell you this as sort of to help you be discerning, mga igsoon. Because I myself have been bothered by this. Nagisgut may ani kagahapon sa among fellowships sa mga laymen. Two nights ago, I was medyo dugay ko nakamata kay dagan kong ipangbasa, dagan kong ipagtanaw. I've learned about this, the scandal of Zav, Ravi Zacharias. Tanawan lang ninyo, but please uh, go to reliable sources if you want to. Ravi Zacharias, by God's grace, have been used by God, uh, have been instrumental even sa kung kugalingon. And not only him, but even some of his, many of his colleagues you know, have been preaching the Word of God apologetically, expositionally. But uh, I think before New Year, nag, nai, nag surface ng mga allegations and even an initial statement from our RZIM, ang organization ni Ravi Zacharias, about the sexual misconduct that he did. And I, I'm, I'm really at the back of my mind, I'm still hoping, Lord, untadili lang, tadili lang tinood, but the, the initial report done by RGIM, it stated that uh, somehow na ay veracity, na ay, na ay truthfulness sa mga claims that indeed Ravi Zacharias has done sexual misconducts. Sexual misconduct. Uh, very, for me, heart-wrenching. Oh, di kakatoo ba? This, this man, and, and, and even ang timing, magayang ka, nga nung karoon pa maninigawas, nga namatay naman si Ravi Zacharias last May. And considering how many people around the world, and even many of them, were very prolific, Hayden Ko, Nabil Koreshi, and many more. Uh, gigamit sa ginoo, kining atao. No? Dili na to ma-deny that God has used him greatly in changing people's lives through the gospel. But this issue, this issue, that he has fallen into this sexual misconduct, sexual sins. It's just, wow. Pero kung, kung, kung magtanaaw ta sa tao, kung magtanaaw ta sa kininga personality, of course, magtanaaw, what? Sa kita, oy, shocking, it's shocking. Right? But when, and again, kung magtanaaw ta sa ginoo, and magtan out us of depravity sa tao, sa sinfulness sa tao, we will not be surprised. We will not be surprised. Ravi Zacharias was also a man. He was a sinner, although he was an instrumental person for the salvation of many, yet he was still a man. And, and, and ang lesson, mga igsoon sa ato is, nahitabu mang ganit ni sa iya, a very famous person and, and even we can sa iyang testimony sa mga interviews sa iyang mga mga writings mga bagingot ang grabe yun spiritual nga tao nahitabok mga ganin ni sa iya how much more sa ato? how much more sa ato? we think we're strong enough we think nga dili ta mahulog sa kini nga pagpakasala are you stronger than Satan now? Are you wiser than David? Are you wiser than Solomon? No, my Ixon. Let us grow in the church so that we will be protected. There is protection. There is safety in the church. In the church of Christ. Ang, ang tinood ng Church of Christ, ha? Dili ka itong silingan. Ang Church of Jesus Christ. Okay? 
I will close with this, my son, sa Galatians 6.1. Pastor Warren expounded this wonderfully. He illustrated this wonderfully. I will just give this as a review somehow. Ephesians 1, uh, Galatians 6.1, brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. This is, <laughs> there are a lot of things to unpack from here. Pero just to give us an illustration, you know what, ang picture ni mga Igsoon, ang picture ani is like a rescue mission. Let's say, for example, ang Sagira, Sagira, sa isa ka platoon, kay naa sila sa trenches, giataki sila sa kaaway, ang, ang, ang member sa platoon, ni retreat na, no? And then, nai isa kakaoba nila na dito sa tubangan, napa sa trench, or perhaps gawa sa trench, or, or anywhere, napa sa front line, wala pa kalihok. Why? Because he was pinned down by gunfire and perhaps basi na igok. Na igok. So, dili sa kalihok and, and all of his kining mga kauban nag-retreat na. And when they noticed him, what, they will, what will they do? What will they do? Of course, instincts sa, sa army. No man gets left behind. Marines, no man left gets behind. Dili na itong biyaan ng itong kauban, especially when he's still alive. So what will they do? They will do whatever they can. Say lang a best. Cover from the fire and then ilang abtun ng ilang kauban and then kuhaon nila hinay-hinay pabalik sa safety silang a platoon, silang a squad, or silang a group. That, this is the rescue mission. This is the restoration, yung ni Apostle Paul Dere. If any man is overtaken in trespass, you are spiritual restorer, such a one, in spirit of gentleness. Notice my son, they will rescue the one who is wounded and is overtaken. Dili nila Ah, naigo naman to. Ato na to tiwasan. Eh, Pastor Boy knows. He's in the service. Okay. Maglikay mangana yung friendly fire. How much more tirahon hino ng kauban nga nag, naigo na gani sa mutan pa yun? No, may isoon. If there is sin, admonish, but help him to stand up. Admonish him as a brother. In 2 Thessalonians 3.15. Do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Bring him back to safety. Do whatever you can to reach out to him and bring him back to safety. That's for a brother who is overtaken in sin. Okay? But of course, let us also take into account Matthew chapter 18. If that brother is unrepentant, then, but at the first sight of a brother who is overtaken in sin, what, what must we do? Our instinct must be to help and restore and help him recover. Mahigsoon, that's why the church is very important. And maupo na ang, important, ang, ang importante ng butang why we are visiting these things, why we are revisiting these things. Because maybe for when, many years, ang ato may gusuon, ato nang napasagdan, ato nang na-neglect. Even ang prayer para sa ila, wala na ato na himo. Let us, let's grow in the church. Let us revisit what we must do, what's our purpose for being in the church. Because this is what God wants for us to do. But this morning, I hope, let's remember as a starter, why must we grow in the church? Because of obedience and for spiritual protection. Spiritual protection. May the Lord God bless His word. Magatindo kitang tanan palihog. Magampo ta. Father, we thank you, Lord, for reminding us of these things. 
Thank you for speaking to us through your word that is alive, that is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing our hearts, the division of our souls. Lord, indeed, we have still a lot of things to, to learn, to know, to remember, to review, especially, Lord, when we talk about your body, your church. Lord, this is your church. Lord, these are your people. Lord, we are yours. And it is very important that we must live our lives, not just individually, but even as a church, according to your purposes, according to your design, because we are already yours. You have bought us with a price. And we must glorify you in our bodies and even, Lord, in this church. And we always, dear Father, cling to you and ask you for help. Thank you, for, thank you Lord, for being our head. Thank you for being our leader. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for being our Comforter, the Holy Spirit, our Guide. And thank you because you are a forgiving Savior and we can always come back to you. Please forgive us, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God for those wonderful reminders sa itong uh, tanan karon nga punta. Please remain standing as we sing our closing song. O Church, Arise. Ready? Sing.
But uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are our God, and we thank you because although we know that you are holy and you, you demand holiness, you are just, you will punish sin, yet you are loving, you are merciful, you are gracious. Whenever we come to you for repentance, you will always receive us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for letting us remember that in your mercy and in your grace, you have sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to live and die on the cross so that we may have the opportunity to be restored unto you. And thank you, dear Father, because right now in our, in our life, in our union with you, you have never, you, have, you haven't left us directionless. You have indeed, dear Father, given us guidance. You have given us instructions. Yes, Lord, instructions that we cannot do and impossible for us to do in and of ourselves alone. But with the Holy Spirit, the Father, we know that you will enable us. And it reminds us, the Father, to trust not in our efforts, even in our own good works, in our, not in our own intellect, not in our own wit, but only the Father to trust only in the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. So help us, O oh God, help us. And help us, the Father, to glorify you in our lives, even as we depart from this place, as we go to our respective families, as the classes resume, as the work, as uh, the works resume. O oh Lord, please be with your people. Continue, the Father, to bless each one of your children. And as we always ask and pray, Lord, prosper your children. Prosper them financially. Prosper them materially. So that they may prosper in good works. And so that you will multiply their influence of good works. So that many more We'll see Jesus Christ in their lives. And your ministry, the Father, will be well taken care of. And more missionaries will be supported, especially in preaching the gospel to the unbelievers and in discipling and nurturing the flock that you have entrusted to them. Lord, we are but a small church. But we thank you for all these years you have been using this church for your glory and honor, especially for your ministry. Lord, continue to do that, please. We gladly, the Father, commit ourselves to you. And in fact, Lord, we are excited to be a part of your ministry, of your kingdom building, of your church building, because we know, Lord, that we are dispensable. You can just use anybody else. But we thank you for this privilege that you have given us that we may be a part of your work. So please, dear Father, Lord, we, we don't have the resources. Sa among kugalingon nga panengkamot, you know, Lord, it's very insignificant. But we know that you, dear Father, will provide for your own work. And that's why we are always confident, Lord, that your work will always be provided. And we are just asking that you will use your children. So therefore, dear Father, please bless them mightily and prosper them in their work, the work of their hands. Oh, Lord, prosper them. And even we commit to you, dear Father, our brethren who are sick, and many of them are not here, or we're unable to come here because of limitations and restrictions. We pray, dear Father, that you will continue to extend your healing hand upon them. 
provide their needs. Give them strength and enablement, dear Father, and joy as they are with their families and also they are with us through this online platform. And Lord, we pray that you will continue to remind us that as we face each day, regardless of the threats, old and new coming, help us, dear Father, to anchor ourselves in our faith, in you, anchor ourselves in you through faith. Not be distracted by fear, but of faith, be courageous and be confident, of course, with caution and care, that, Lord, you are our protector, you are our healer. We do not fear what men or what any sicknesses can do to us because you are our shield and you are our healer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for these realizations. Thank you for everything. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for letting us feel joy, peace, and satisfaction and fulfillment in our fellowship right now. Lord, we adore you. We love you. We magnify you. We are always in awe of you for who you are in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. And to you, we commit all these things. We give you, uh, Lord, all the honor and the all glory already belong to you, Lord. So we just recognize that you alone are the bearer of glory, of majesty, of praises and adoration of all creatures here on earth above and below. Now, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us until forevermore. may be seated. Please be seated for a while. Uh, salamat mag- Again, Happy New Year everyone and salamat kayo sa Gino. I know you have enjoyed your time with your family. Uh, maybe you have uh, exchanged gifts or <clears throat> nagpabunga uh, mo og pagkaon sa inyong mga uh, celebrations. Uh, which way it is or whatever uh, you did, I, I, I believe and I hope you had all a great time and 
uh, you know what? I believe nga idubli na sa Ginoo ang inyong kalipay because uh, you have been a great part no sa pag palipay pod sa ato nga mga missionaries. Uh, di pa namo wala pa nako na ko ano mga photos sige lang mga next Sunday siguro amo lang ipakita sa mga no. I-share sa inyo ang mga photos sa mga pastors and sa mga missionaries nga atong no nga na-share nato sa mga panalangin mga panalangin naging semana no naging Pasko og uh, New Year na yung mga text sa mga pastors nga nag-abot uh, dako gyud kaayo ang ilang pasalamat na yung sila pastor palihog lang gyud paabot sa mga igsuon sa harvest season. so uh, mga igsuon from our missionaries from our pastors sa uh, Cotabato dito sa uh, Agusan and sa uban pang mga lugar uh, dili gyud kaayo no dako gyud pero at least salamat sa Ginoo na bahati nila ang inyong gugma ug paghunahuna sa ila so salamat sa Ginoo sa inyo mga igsuon and that's i believe what made our new year more meaningful no tungod kay uh, napalipay pod sa Ginoo ang atong mga missionaries to this church so salamat yun, salamat kayo napagan ni uban nga wala pa na hatag no na, 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 na Wala man na ulahi o gabot, at na ulahi medyo gabot, nakalakaw namin, nangato namin, ang uban, wala pa na hatag. So, sige lang, mapahatag pa ito na sa ila. Okay, uh, aside from that, ato mga birthdays for this month, so far, no? Andre, si Nikki, sa, kuan? Sa January 1, no? Last January 1, si LJ, sa 11, kasi nga Jimmy, Tatay Jojo, <laughs> Tatay Jojo uh, 15 no, Happy birthday tayo Si Mama Jenny Melindo Sa 24 Si ay, Lolo Martin Sa kuwan pa ah, Lolo Martin January no? January 30 January 30 So Mau pa lang ni na lista dari Pero kinsa pa Wala na to na lista dari Napa Napa I, Ato lang i Sunod ha Ato lang i Butang dia Mamnit? October mas gusto mamnit. Tagal siya tayo judo. October. Oh. Okay, so again, it is January and February is fast approaching. No, last uh, weekend sa February is our scheduled anniversary. So let's pray about it. No, mo announce lang ko kung uh, kano sa tama ng meeting. And uh, this will be the next coming weeks will be very busy. Magatag lang ko mga announcements. Uh, sa atong, through text or sa social media, just uh, stand by. But uh, please pray, no? let's continue to pray para sa ato nga uh, mga panghimuon na po karon nga tuig. 25th year, very significant, and a milestone. Uh, I'm both maragdi pa siguro na to may invite si Pastor Stuki. Pastor Karun, no? lisod kayo. Labi na kay travel ban na po. Uh, sa U.S., uh, because we know si uh, desire no ni Pastor Boy and even sa atong leadership nga unta every five years ato ma invite si Pastor Stuki at ang pioneering pastor di sa church pero uh, I think it will be difficult this time so we'll just pray no we'll just pray uh, what we will do nga maka celebrate yun ta sa kayo sa Gino for 25 years sa Harvest Baptist Church all right I think uh, announcement Not a visitor, si Arceline Basilisco. Arceline Basilisco. Hello, welcome, Arceline. Welcome. Welcome. Wala mo na mga detail dili. Uh, sige lang, no? Uh, thank you. Salamat sa ginoo. Uh, you are here. Dili ni accidente. And we're happy you're here. Arceline, wish... Uh, you could be with us no, sa next Sundays. Wala na? Panilain? Okay. So, regyod, di na good. Hanap na good kaya ako mata. Di na ko kaklaro sa likod. Di po ko kabantay kung kisabay na ibago. Wala kay... Kung na ay maskara, murag pares-pares naman mo kagwapa. Labi na mga babay. Kung na po yung maskara, ang mga lalaki, mas maklaro kung kisa tong mas maot kay ang buhok. Di ba? <laughs> Bagor ba ko galot? <laughs> Anyway, uh, welcome, no? Salamat sa gino. Tatay Jojo, announcement? Magaling ka? Palihog ko, Mike. Ha? Ako na lang? Okay. Uh, ako na lang i-mention. 
Now, let's pray mga igsuon. Nakahinumdum mo first Sunday sa December, nag-announce ni Tatay Jojo sa atong mga bagong igsuon dito sa Esperanza. Katong ginaprayhan nato nga mapadakan ang ilang ang ilang ang balay sa atong isa sa atong uh, part sa team nila Jimboy dito kay no uh, si Pastor Boy nakaadto last week nakita po niya mga more than mga more or less 20 ka mga batan-on mga lalaki lang na di ba wa pa appeal sa mga babae Pastor uh, dito no ongoing ilang discipleship na ay bagong mga Christians na uban naga join so it's a really wonderful opportunity no nga matabangan nato dito ang outreach dito sa Esperanza. So ang need dito mag uh, magpadako sa ilang balay tigumanan and even sa balay po ni Jimboy which mo gihimon lang tigumanan. Unya, ang mga laymen no nagapray karon no. Ang pwede niyo palihok mga laymen, especially yung mga asawa sa ato mga laymen. Kamo na lay pangutana sa ila or mga men na kamo na lay share sa mga asawa sa project no naga naga project sila, naga project ang laymen karon o amount nga magamit para maka-start dito sa project no sulti man ako kam sulti pa uh, we are we are targeting mga kuha no project ni sa mga laymen ha pero kung naay mo ambit okay gyapon kaayo no okay gyapon kaayo pero nag project ang laymen og mga 20 to 30,000 para sa kay kung kung ang ang, ang gihuna-huna sa mga men kagahapon Kung padakan man lang gani para naa sila kapunduhan dito, mas maay pag dako-dakoon na lang gamay. Kanang medyo komportable po sila o medyo ligon kay bahaunon na ba dito ng lugar. Okay? So, mauna ang project sa mga laymen. Let's pray for that. And uh, kung maambit ang mga wumis, okay po gayo. No. Alright, wala na ilang announcements. Kung wala na, let's all stand please. And uh, Ay, so sorry, sorry, excuse me, excuse me. By the way, yun ay, last na lang. Salamat kita sa Ginoo. Karon nga bulan officially mag-start og work kauban sa ato si Pastor Jomari. Pastor Jomari, salamat sa Ginoo. Uh, he committed to work with the church as volunteer. Uh, next Sunday na or the next Sunday pa ato lang si formally i-present sa church no atong prayhan for uh, this coming Sunday. But salamat sa Ginoo karon so good na siya no this this January. He's working. Abisa pag dili pa official, nagsugod naman siya tabang sa ato at si Simban. So, salamat kayo. It's truly a blessing uh, for having uh, Pastor Jomari with us, no? our own uh, homegrown. Uh, si Jomari ba ang first ng estudyante sa Harvest Hills, no? Nanahin mo nga worker, dari? Ikaw? Oh, sila ni, ay, sila ni Jexter. Sila ni Jexter. Sa si Jexter, no? Si Jexter po, no? he's working with us uh, sa school and even dili sa church. Okay? So, salamat sa Ginoo. Uh, I, I, may imagine lang ako si Ma'am Coney dito sa taas ba? No, nag-ngisi na, nalipay na. Okay. Ito bag si Ginoo yung pag -ampo. So, salamat sa Ginoo. Let's all stand please and let's welcome one another. Let's sing, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Ready? Sing. I'm so glad. 